Hey guys, before I get into the review of Déclaration Bacartier, I just wanted to thank my Facebook group, FGN, um, the members that did post under the Déclaration post that I asked you guys to give me some feedback on the fragrance. If you smelt it, give me your feedback and you're going to make the video on YouTube. I do hold my promise on your comments are going to be at the end of this video. I've uh, chosen just a small handful of them. I couldn't pick them all. Um, but definitely keep your eye out on FGN on Facebook. I've already posted my next review that's coming out on YouTube. Comment below and you'll make the video just like on Declaration. So thank you FGN. Enjoy the review. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another fragrance review on the Robes Away channel. Uh, thank you for having me. This is actually my uh, very first fragrance review for season 17. Uh, my first review for the year 2015. I gotta shake off this rust really, really quick. Uh, see if I can uh, give this fragrance uh, justice here. I decided to go with a classic in the men's game here. Um, this one, of course, a 90s baby. Um, a fragrance that is known quite a bit in our fragrance game. Um, definitely, I'm kind of I'm shocked on just a small handful of reviews there is on this particular fragrance on YouTube. But I'm very, very happy to let you guys know my take on this fragrance. I've been uh, testing quite a bit of this fragrance. So what is the fragrance in question? You probably saw, of course, the title. But it is from the House of Cartier. And um, this is the one that started it all. There's a gazillion flankers on this fragrance, and there's a good reason why. Um, but this is the originator. This is called Déclaration. Now you'll see that my bottle, my box kind of looks different from the original packaging. If you do do a kind of like a Google search and you'll see that it's kind of like a clear bottle instead of my um, silver bullet over here. Um, this is the Prestige edition of Déclaration. I thought it was a sexier uh, edition bottle. I don't know when the Prestige edition was released, but uh, the year that it was released. But it's just a, a different bottle, same juice. So I'm reviewing um, the original Déclaration with the uh, clear bottle if you guys kind of want to know. Uh, what's going on here as far as this uh, fragrance goes. So let's get into Declaration. Let's take a little bit of a, a background into it. Let's see what it's all about. Um, a huge pertinent fact that I kind of found out about Declaration is it's the best selling Cartier based fragrance uh, of all time. So that means the men's and women's section. This is their, their bread and butter over here. And this is the reason why Cartier has released so many flankers of the original juice. It's just because it sells so well. And this is their bread and butter in the fragrance game. I mean, it's their best selling fragrance. Now, uh, now in 2015, Decadacion might get overlooked, especially with somebody that's just stepping into uh, the fragrance game, kind of looking around and seeing what Cartier has to offer. They're probably going to go to the newer releases, you know, the Roadsters and um, the new flanker of this one, I believe that was released a few years ago called um, Decadacion de Soir, the rose based fragrance, which I hear great, great things about. Um, but, you know, I like to go into brands like Cartier and go into their older fragrances, especially Cartier because I hear a lot of their older stuff, their discontinued stuff, is actually quite, quite good. Um, this one really just caught my nose just because I was huge into Jean-Claude Lénin's sets and I wanted to see his earlier work. And this stuff is really, Déclaration is the blueprint of Jean-Claude Lénin. Hands down, um, I see so much of this in a lot of his newest uh, releases. So, Déclaration was actually released back in 1998, so it's kind of old, yeah. Now, the nose behind Déclaration is uh, my favorite nose in the whole game, Monsieur Jean-Claude Elena. Um, this fragrance right here just really shows me um, where he really, it's not his first fragrance, it's not like where he really started, but it really shows me um, his preferred DNA in his fragrances. Um, this shows me where Tel Hermes came from. Um, it really shows me where Voyage came from, from Hermes. So um, it really just shows uh, what Elena really, really liked in a fragrance. He really liked using those uh, certain spices that kind of give you an edge to a fragrance. Um, he likes to use citruses up top, oranges, lemons, um, really authentic, juicy um, 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 citruses in his fragrances. And of course, a nice... Uh, uh, smooth, uh, woody backbone to the fragrance. So I'm going to get into that, of course, with the Déclaration and let you guys know what I think about this fragrance, but it has Jean-Claude Elena's DNA all over it. Um, I truly believe this set is the prototype for Elena's later work for Hermes, including, of course, Tad and Voyage, uh, to name a few. Um, flankers to this fragrance, there is so many just because it is 
uh, Cartier's bread and butter. So, you know, they want to maximize profit. They want to make more fragrances with the name of Declaration on it. So we got Declaration, uh, we got Essence Declaration, we got Declaration L'eau, uh, Declaration d'un soir intense, and of course we got Declaration d'un soir, Declaration Bois Bleu, and Declaration Cologne. So there's a lot of flankers in this fragrance and there's a reason for that. So guys, let's get into presentation and we're gonna zoom in on this bottle and box and see what we get as far as presentation. Now let's take a look at presentation. Um, Declaration comes in multiple bottle sizes. You got the standards, the 50 mil, the 100 mil. Um, this guy right here is actually the 100 mil. And there's also the mega big bottle. Since it's such a big seller for Cartier, um, they have a 200 milliliter bottle also available. Um, pricing does vary. It's an older uh, fragrance, so you're able to get it at discounters and stuff like that. So shop around, of course. Um, retail usually goes for 30, right up to 100 bucks uh, for a bottle of this stuff. Um, it is an eau de toilette concentration. Um, so let's take a look at bottle in the box. Now again, of course, this is not the original. Like I said earlier in the intro, it is the Edition Prestige, as you can see here. Um, eau de toilette and a uh, picture of the uh, bottle here. There's not much information as far as the box goes. There's uh, some writing here, uh, writing in the back and all that and that's about it. As far as the bottle goes, um, again the Prestige Edition, kind of like the silver bullet look. Um, the cap kind of, well it's not the cap, but the sprayer actually kind of looks like a uh, watch. Um, on the side of the watches you can uh, change the uh, the time. This kind of, this is what it looks like and again Cartier being a jewelry company, I uh, can see uh, the relation with that. Um, so these sprayers are kind of strange like this. They kind of pop up like this and then there's like a stopper here to stop you from spraying. Um, so you'd have to go like this um, to, to actually get it to spray as you can see here. I'm actually a very good sprayer as you can see a very good mist here. Um, and then it says Declaration here with Cartier on the side. Um, and then uh, that's about it as far as uh, information. There is some information at the bottom. I don't think you guys will be able to see all that writing here. Um, but anyway, uh, that is bottle presentation. Let's get into it. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of all my fragrance reviews. What does this fragrance smell like? Let's get into the notes. Let's not waste any time. Let's go split screen. The notes are gonna be right beside me, either here or here. I don't know, <laughs> I haven't done a review in a long time. Um, but either way, you're going to see not all the notes are beside me just because I couldn't fit in my split screen. So let's get into it. I'm going to name them off. In the top, we got Artemisia, Caraway, Coriander, we got Birch, Mandarin Orange, Bergamot, Neroli, and Bitter Orange. In the mid, uh, we have Iris, Ginger, Cinnamon, Pepper, Juniper Berry, Orris Root, Jasmine, and Cardamom. And in the base, we got Leather, Amber, Tea, Vetiver, Oak Moss, and Cedarwood. So really a huge note breakdown. Um, you know, I wouldn't blame you if you really didn't know what this fragrance was going to smell just because of the note breakdown is just... <laughs> so the major notes to my nose, this might kind of break it down a little bit for you. The major notes, um, lots of spices guys. This is a spiced infused uh, fragrance, mostly cardamom, but you're going to get that coriander, you're going to get that caraway, um, you know, we got some ginger in here too. Um, so you're going to get a lot of that. Um, you're going to get uh, a lot of citruses off the bat, off the top. So. Um, like I said in the note breakdown in the top, you got that mandarin orange, you got um, bitter orange, um, you got bergamot, so a lot of juicy citrus. Um, I felt like the bitter orange um, from what I got was from Bigara Concentré, the same type of uh, bitter orange that you get in that fragrance, you kind of got on Declaration. So it's really interesting that Elena used that bitter orange in here and then kind of put it into a Frédéric Mal fragrance. Um, it's kind of interesting to see uh, what notes are, you know, the Pepfamese favorites when they're trying to do a certain thing or a certain idea. So bitter orange, definitely in this fragrance. Um, it's actually really, really good in this fragrance too. Um, also, you get a little bit of birch, more of a secondary note to me, um, but still does quite well. Um, I get quite a bit of smoke from the birch sometimes, somewhere, somewhere, it's not so much. Tea, um, iris, the orris root, um, kind of gives you that uh, makeup plasticky feel. Um, almost powdery. Um, you're gonna get some florals in here too, the neroli and the um, uh, jasmine um, comes to my nose quite a bit um, as far as this fragrance goes. And that goes to group. What would I group it into? More of a woody floral musk. Um, definitely has a, you know, cedar also is a good a secondary note in this fragrance. I forgot to name off uh, cedar, but cedar's a good uh, secondary note in this fragrance, especially in the dry down. 
Um, how many sprays and where with Declaration? I go fairly, five sprays is good for me. One on the chest right here, right smack down on my chest. Uh, two on the neck, boom, boom. And two on the arm. So pulse points, if I'm wearing a t-shirt like this, I'd probably put it right up here. The elbows, boom, boom. I'm good to go, five sprays. Now let's get into the nitty gritty, the top and the dry down. Now I've got a lot to say about Declaration, um, so I'm going to try to make this quick. I don't want this to be a 30 minute review like I usually do. I'm going to try to make it to dub it down a bit, but i got a lot to say about Declaration. Um, this fragrance has a lot of depth to it. It's got a lot to it, so I really, really want to let you guys know what I get from it. Oh, that, that bitter orange, like it, it just hits me right off the bat. I just want to let you guys know that. Um, first, first spray, orange. Spices in the background coming in, coming to get you. Those spices are going to get you, especially some people that have like a sensitive nose might not like the spices in this fragrance. Just a word of warning. But the bitter, bitter orange, ooh la la. So, Declaration starts off with a grand entrance. It's grand, it's fresh, it's clean, gives you a good hit of citruses. Mainly orange, got that bitter orange. Then almost immediately, you are welcome with the depth of Declaration and never really look back. Um, it gives you depth right away. You think it's going to be a transparent orange based fragrance and then you're like, oh, oh, hey, the spice came up. Herbs, spices <laughs> come crashing through the fragrance, kind of uh, mainly detecting a good amount of cardamom here, paired with coriander. We got some pepper in here, kind of give it some kick. Some kind of get like a B.O. or uh, cumin kind of like vibe uh, from the cardamom. And if you do uh, in the past kind of get that from that certain note, perhaps this one's not for you. Especially if you don't like, you know, Bigarra Concentré from Jean-Claude Elena. You don't like Tell Them as really that much. Not that they, they're similar to this fragrance, so kind of just let you guys know uh, what you're going to be getting from this. Personally, I felt the Calaisian spices were not overwhelming. I mean, it really just balanced out really, really well right now in the introduction, you know, you're getting. You know, you're getting that, you know, that, that citrus, those spices, and then the woods come in, slowly, creeping. Um, now, Declaration from the start shows me the town of Mr. Elena from blending different notes, making a scent full of depth, but not too busy. Um, I really felt like this fragrance kind of was, he's a master at this, like making a fragrance that's so good for almost all seasons. Um, it, it feels like some fragrances, they put a little bit too much spice and just kerfuffles all the citruses. I'm um, just pushes them away and it makes it more of a winter based fragrance than anything. This is perfect for summer, good for winter, and but mostly for, for fall and spring. But um, really he's a, a master at that from bl blending these notes. Um, the citruses continue to linger, but go from primary to secondary notes after the first hour of wearing. So you're going to see they're going to kind of slow down the truck and citrus game in this fragrance. You can definitely detect the birch. Um, from uh, Declaration that kind of gives the scent a different, uh, in different wearings, kind of like a smoky vibe. I didn't get it every, every single time, but sometimes, depending on the weather, depending on my skin, um, I, could, I could really smell like if I had like really, um, really dry skin, the smoke came out of the birch for some reason. Weird, but great. Um, the woody vibe of Declaration isn't immediate in the introduction, so you're kind of, it's going to be gracefully coming into the fragrance and actually be the primary note after a while. Um, and I could tell right away smelling this introduction that it's an Elena based fragrance. I already knew. I didn't have to do any research. I could smell it in the bottle. Um, and, and you can really smell his like new releases from Hermes. Um, and if you love those type of fragrances, you're absolutely going to love Declaration. It's around the same. Uh, area. Now let's get into the dry down of Declaration and what do I get once this uh, kind of settles on your skin a little bit. Now in the dry down Declaration scales back the spices a few notches and you start discovering more of the dry woody aspect of the ISO E Super. Um, that's like kind of like a, a compound. I don't like throwing compound names in fragrance reviews. I really don't. Uh, but it's known that he's used this uh, compound before and the, in this fragrance has it. Um, it's more of a secondary role than a primary in this fragrance, to be honest. It kind of puts everything together and, and Elena likes to do that uh, with a lot of his fragrances. And, and the, in this fragrance, it did put kind of everything together. Uh, you'll get to pick out some of the sweet florals in this fragrance. You kind of get that, that, that jasmine is a sweet floral, uh, neroli. A um, bit of spices, some woods, of course the cedar, and vetiver. 
Now at this point in the dry down, um, Dick Davisio really dries up while continuing to lose the citruses and kind of amplifying the woods in the fragrance. The scent starts getting a little more brown. I like to emphasize colors in some certain uh, fragrance reviews. Um, kind of like Tavo Mez has like a, that orange brown like feel. Um, this really has like more of a brown. It's starting to get darker. The brown kind of reminds me of woods. Um, it reminds me of vetiver. That's why the, there's vetiver in here, a good amount of it. The cedar back in it. A little bit of spice. There's some tea like notes coming here from time to time. Um, there is some florals in here. They're pretty scarce in here. You kind of have to really look for them. I didn't feel like the, the florals in this fragrance really made this like super feminine. No way. Um, but if you do look for them, you are going to get them. It, it kind of showed me that like that sweet jasmine. Um, to really to summarize, Declaration has that familiar Elena DNA. Um, even if you're new or have smelled many of his scents, this one shows all of the darker notes. Um, that he likes to use. Um, it shows all his strengths as, as far as a um, perfumier. It'll show um, a lot of a lot of great stuff. Um, the insane blend of fresh notes, darker notes, and a good dose of challenging uh, spices to give it a bit of edge. Um, he's master making scents like super versatile, uh, almost for all seasons. And Dick Teresino hits all the check marks for being signature scent worthy and great for all seasons. It definitely is one of those, you know, Swiss Army knives in the fragrance game. It has a classic tone to it, even though, you know, it's not too old. It's old enough. It's in the 90s. It has that classic tone to it, but also remaining very much modern. Um, it, again, it shows me like the newest Hermes fragrances. This could fit right in as far as a new release, and it's still relevant even with the fragrance idea being over, you know, 15, almost 20 years old. Um, he really did a, a great job with the Cadassion. So let's get into my final take of this fragrance. Now let's take a look at recommended age. I would recommend this to more of a mature crowd. Then again, I would like to say as my recommended age would have to be 20 and up. Um, this can be unisex. Also, I actually know some women um, that actually wear this. Um, again, when I say unisex, some men might shy away from the fragrance saying, oh, this might be a little too floral. That No, 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 don't you worry about that. And it's just those women kind of gravitate to these kind of scents. And this is definitely not feminine, um, but it can be unisex. And I, I think it's, it's great for both sexes. Bottles. What does it remind me of? Well, I've already named off quite a few in this review. You know, Tab d'Armes, you know, and then his newer work, Bigera Concentré, Voyage d'Armes. Um, some say it smells a little bit like Luminis by Frappé. Um, awards. Has it been in any of my top 10 or top 20 lists? Unfortunately, no. Um, Dick Nadecion has always been um, in the, I would say, in the, um, in the running, just never won. So it's never been one of my fragrances that I go and grab all the time. Um, it's in the rotation. I wear it from time to time, but not as much as the fragrances that do make top 10, top 20 lists. Um, best time to wear this fragrance? It has to be day. I love wearing this in the daytime. Um, seasons, um, I really like to say that this is a signature scent worthy all season type of fragrance. It, it works wonders, you know, in the cold or in the heat. Um, if you really absolutely want a season from me, I would have to say fall and spring, just because those seasons are kind of, you know, you never know what you're going to get. You know, it might be cold in the morning and then it warms up during the day or vice versa. It might be, you know, warm in the morning and then you get rain or you get snow or something like that. Um, this fragrance is really great for that just because it kind of changes on your skin um, depending, you know, if I'm sweating a bit, getting a little warm, getting cool. Um, it really does. Um, it's one of those fragrances that I absolutely love wearing in those, uh, in the middle seasons, in the middle of summer and uh, of course winter. I like to, to wear it fall and spring. Uh, compliment factor, Declaration is not a, um, as some people like to say, panty dropper, no. Um, Declaration for me is just middle of the road. You're going to get some good with some of the bad. Um, I did get, you know, some of the worst comments with Declaration. You know, some people, uh, when they smell this, they're thinking about bio, they're thinking about body odor, just because it, it, it reminds them of cumin or something like that. Um, you're going to get that. You're going to get some of that. But also on the flip side of things, I've had some of my best responses. So a common factor, I have to say middle of the road because I got a lot of 50-50 guys, good and bad um, with this one. Um, now, just kind of like a overall, when I think Declaration, I just think overly solid. Um, it, it, it hits all check marks. It's very, very solid in everything. Um, 
it might smell a little too common, especially if you smell quite a, quite a few scents in your lifetime. Um, for me, again, I've went through Jean-Claude Dananin's catalog like crazy. I own most of the bottles that he has, you know, fragrances that he has made. So I kind of know what I'm getting from him. This is nothing new, but it's nice to go back in the 90s and see what he has done in that genre. Um, Declaration was really that start of him using ISO E Super and, you know, kind of using that citrus off the top and the, and the cedar from the ISO. And um, it was really nice to kind of see how he made a fragrance. He actually made a classic uh, with uh, those notes and that uh, compound. It was, it was really actually interesting for me. Uh, but again, it might smell a little too common from what he has done, um, especially recently. I feel like Declaration will be one of those scents that will be either be loved at first sniff or hated at first sniff, um, honestly. Uh, for someone like me, I just appreciate what it is um, because I look at fragrances differently than other people. Um, a lot of you that watch my videos feel the same way. Um, this is more of something that I appreciate that I go, oh, this is Jean Claude Dana, you know, this is one of his first, you know, what, what he did with this. Uh, it's really an interesting fragrance to me. Uh, but other than that, it's not one of those that I'm going to be wearing every day of the week. Um, now, what would you love and what would you hate from it? Well, why would you love this fragrance? The blend. I um, mean, tend to appreciate Elena's work, again, like me. Um, the classic appeal to it, I don't think this is ever going to go, you know, out of style. I really think this is actually a really good fragrance to have as a signature scent. Why would you hate it? Mainly, um, I would think, spices. So if you're looking at the spices in this fragrance, you're like, no-go, um, it's probably going to be a no-go for you. Um, the orange also, some people felt like it was synthetic. I felt the other way around. I actually felt like the, um, the citruses in this fragrance were really, really well, well done. Um, but some people have said like a pledge like orange to this fragrance. I disagree, but again, that's the reason why you would hate it. You never know. Different noses. Uh, different ways of looking at it. So let's get into the rating system. Let's go split screen and I'm going to give Declaration its rating. Let's see from 1 to 10 what it gets. So projection, I'm giving it 6 out of 10. Um, it's solid but it's not great. It, it's not a uh, projection like Beast. I know a lot of people online are saying differently. It is actually a Beast to them. Great for you. For me, as far as my testing goes, projection, not very good. Um, Kind of what I was expecting, 6 out of 10. Longevity, now that's a little better, 8 out of 10. I mean, you're going to see the scores here are very, very solid going through here. 8 out of 10 for longevity. I get 7 to 9 hours. That's exactly what I'm looking for in a fragrance. It gives it to me. Versatility, again, very solid. 8 out of 10. Very versatile. I could wear it during the night, during the day, all seasons. I can't really think of something that I would never, I wouldn't wear this, unless the girl I'm dating hates it. That's probably the only reason I wouldn't wear it. Smell. Um, smell, this gets a solid 8. Um, it smells great, depending who you are, what you like in fragrances. Um, but as far as price goes and, and what I'm getting from the smell, um, this is a great blend. It smells great. Uh, solid 8. And that goes to overall, this fragrance is a solid 8. Um, it's not off the charts, you know, 10 out of 10, but I really, really think that this is a, just a solid fragrance through and through. Longevity, projection, um, what it's giving you as far as uh, what your money is concerned. Um, it really is just solid, an 8 out of 10, and that's why it sells so well. So that goes to buy, try, or pass. It kind of sounds definitely a try, guys. It can't be a blind buy. It can't be a buy um, for me. It's definitely not a pass. It's a very solid fragrance from Cartier. Um, it's definitely a try just because of the, I think it's the spices mainly. you got to see if it's going to hit you the right way or the wrong way. But in a nutshell, it's just a classic scent that's good across the board. Nothing too crazy uh, to make it stand out, but nothing too bad to make it, you know, a pass. So definitely a try, guys. If it seems interesting to you, go get it.